Hey everybody, welcome to another drive through board game vlog. Today's gonna to be kind of a smorgasbord or salad, if you will, of topics. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about though is the intro that you probably just watched. So if you looked at the last couple of my reviews, you'll have seen this. And this intro was actually donated by Don Von De Eden. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm gonna put a link to his website and his company website uh, in the description of uh, the video here. And Don contacted me a few months ago. I don't know sure for when he first contacted me. And he said, hey, you know, I've got this. I'm going to do the intro for you. And I said, okay. Um, you know, I didn't know anything about him. And he said, here's a link to my website. And I'm like, wow, it's pretty cool stuff he does. And so I said, yeah, go for it. And it, then the first time he showed me, it was kind of like the opening sort of sequence of, you know, the intro that you see there. And I was completely blown away by it. And, you know, I don't want to get all gushy and stuff. I've kind of already had those moments <laughs> away from the camera. And I was, I was just freaking blown out of the water. I'm like, I don't deserve <laughs> to have an intro this good, you know, in front of my videos. Uh, so, Don, I can't thank you enough. I thank you already, you know, via email and stuff. Uh, please go check out his website and his company's website. And if you're in need of 3D graphics, I mean, you know, this was kind of off the cuff, but he really kind of banged this out. And you know, we shot ideas back and forth for a couple of different parts of the video. And I, I, to me, it's amazing. I sat and watched it when he gave me the, like, the last final copy of it like a hundred times. I mean, seriously, I was just like watching it. There's little details you can see and no different game pieces and different parts of different boards and little, you know, sort of uh, Easter egg style animations and things. So uh, I was completely just blown out of the water by it. And I just have to thank him again, you know, publicly on the, on the vlog and everything just amazing so the next thing I want to talk about is I've revamped my website and this kind of ties in with the previous thing because one of my stretch goals which we sort of shuffled around which we didn't actually hit was to kind of revamp the website and redo the intro and well we went a little bit over the previous stretch goal and then I did some add-ons and stuff so I had some extra money to go tinker around with the website most of that money was going to go towards uh, you know redoing the video which would have cost a lot of money but since Stan donated at his time I mean I didn't really need to do that. So that worked out great anyway. So I've redone the website. It's now better supported on mobile. So for some reason, if you want to view the website on your iPhone or something, you can. Uh, it's got a nice search engine and stuff. You can go search. So if you're looking for my videos and you wanted to see, hey, did he review Tigers and Euphrates or Medici or whatever, some old game? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But you can go search. Probably the best place to do that is on the website because it's got a cool little thing where it sort of auto-completes your search and all that kind of cool stuff. And you can go search by category. So if you really want to see what I think about something, the easiest place for me would be to search that. I mean, you could go scroll through my geek list or search YouTube as well, but not, YouTube isn't really that great categorized and you just playlists and stuff, but it's a little easier to go to website. So hopefully everybody likes the website and you can see all these videos there. Most people just watch me on YouTube anyway. But uh, so there's that. So that's great. And so sort of dovetailing out of this uh, is that I have put up a Twitch poll. I'll put links again to everything I talk about. There's a Twitch poll uh, basically on the next game that I'll do on Twitch. Um, so the last time I did was Pandemic the Cure and I apologize, it was an hour long. It was really like a test thing and I spent a little bit too much time trying to figure out if it was actually working. It was everything seemed to be working fine. Uh, so the next one is probably gonna be XCOM or Roll for the Galaxy. Now there's a poll kind of seeing you know, which one it should be. I'll get to everything in the poll, but if you want to vote for one or the other, you know, or there's a couple other ones in there, Forbidden Island, Defenders of the Realm, Eldritch Horror, and stuff like that. The next one's going to be Roll for the Galaxy or XCOM. Uh, but if you want to vote for something else or comment on something, then go for it, and I'll take a look at it for sure. The next thing I want to talk about is a website called GameShelf.se. So you can go here, you can load in your BGG collection or your friends and throw them all together, and then it will generate a game for you to play out of your collection. So you can do that randomly or set up different filter criteria and then it'll spit it out. So sometimes folks have a hard time figuring out what to play game night, which we sometimes do as well. And so this is a cool, you know, little aspect that you can do and, you know, fire this up on your phone or whatever and figure out what you want to play. That's pretty cool. So the next thing I want to talk about is the movie called the tabletopmovie.com. You can go there and, and watch it. And it's about the next great American board game. But what it's really about is a guy named Randall and he's bipolar. And so part of the movie is about him kind of dealing with that condition, but he has a goal to publish a board game. And he thinks it's the greatest board game ever. And it's about traffic and it's called Turnpike. And so the game will kind of show you a little bit about the game. 
but he sets off on this sort of adventure to, uh, he goes to Gen Con, he goes to Chicago Toy and Game Fair, he goes to a few other places, talks to a lot of the smart people, a lot of familiar faces that you'll see uh, in the industry. But he's very much an outsider, you know, to the hobby. He doesn't really know much about like Ticket to Ride and Catan and, you know, how board games have sort of evolved over the last several years. Uh, so he's kind of coming in at, at it with a lot of enthusiasm, which is cool. And, you know, a lot of naivete, like they would say. So it's a very interesting sort of journey for him and where he kind of ends up with his conclusion. And is an interesting personality to watch because he has very exuberance. So there's an interesting sort of attitude that he has um, that he approaches with the game. And there's a certain amount of naivete that he has. So it's a very interesting thing to think about. So somebody that's new to the hobby coming into it and it was kind of a breath of fresh air to watch some of the, the way he absorbed and kind of dismissed things that I would normally take for granted. That's probably a lot of you would. Uh, so there's a couple of things to note about the, the thing. You know, he's very much like everybody else that isn't in the hobby in a lot of ways. And so a lot of me is like, oh, yeah, that's what it's like to not be in the hobby and really know anything about it. You know, not good or bad, no judgment. It's just like, okay, so he's got that. That's, that's interesting. So it's something that you kind of remind yourself of, of what you think of when somebody says board game, or what a good board game could be. So that was interesting. Um, there's a little bit of, I don't want to give away any of the movie, but he kind of bounces between being an artist He's kind of coming out from like, okay, I'm the artist. I have this big vision, this, you know, big story I want to tell. And then the, that kind of compared to being a designer and what that actually means. And that was interesting. I haven't really thought a lot about the difference between being an artist or game designer as artist versus game designer as designer. You know, a uh, little insight to me. I went to uh, college and I have a degree actually in art education, but I actually do computer programming by day. Uh, so have, that's a long story. But And so we always talked about the difference between art and design. You know, we had the graphic designers and then we had the artists on one side. It was interesting because the school was split. Uh, I went to the side that was in Oakland, California. That was the art side. And then the graphic design or the design side was over in San Francisco. Um, so it's a very interesting thing. Uh, so I haven't thought about that in a long time. Um, so there's another thing about him that's interesting. So he's precocious. Like, like I said, he's got this overzealous enthusiasm. And is one, like part of me wants to be annoyed at it because I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is how it has to be. And you kind of see some of the publishers things get, I don't know, annoyed, but they're being firm and they're being truthful with them. Uh, but it's also kind of endearing because he keeps pushing. Like he just is pushing. And that's, I like that. I like that he's going after it. So it's got that go get it, you know, act you know, attitude that he has is really cool. So it's a little annoying on one hand, cause I'm like, no, you gotta listen. You gotta sit down, like, yeah, I wanna sit him down. But then he keeps going, it keeps going. I'm like, okay, I got it. He's, he's, you know, he starts convincing me after a while. Um, and so the other thing is interesting to him is I w the game is about traffic. And there's a couple of scenes where he's driving. I'm like, okay, I would never want to be in the car with him. Just kind of his attitude about traffic. And you can kind of see where he got the idea for the game. Uh, so that's the interesting. I'm like, okay, I'd never ride in the car, uh, you know, with this guy. So um, let's see. So the last thing I want to mention is there's extra interviews, about three hours of extra interviews, Klaus Teuber, Richard Garfield, all that stuff. Lots of great designers and things. I'm forgetting like so many of them. Um, and it kind of ties in interestingly with the movie because there's an interesting sort of thread because like i said there's a whole dynamic of artist and designer and most of these are talking about designers but also some publishers and how you sort of do with that feedback loop so you start with that initial idea and then the game sort of tries to evolve and it, this really came out when matt leacock and eric lang were actually together uh the director sort of had them interview each other which was interesting so that whole feedback loop and how you deal with it and how a game progresses from sort of that idea genesis to where it becomes. Um, so lots of good stuff to, to think about there. Uh, so the last thing I wanna talk about here, I will do a little blacklist uh, at the end of the video for those that uh, you know are interested in that. Uh, but I wanna talk about a couple of cool things, first of all. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is uh, there's a Stonemaier Games treasure chest. So this is a treasure chest, it's just a component box. It was kickstarted uh, not so long ago, but it is still available for sale on their website. And it's got a lot of great components. And the first game I thought of using these in was Stone Age. You can see there's some gold bars, some gems, some different kinds of stone and bricks and wood and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, so you can see there, it's got a lot of good you know, qualities and materials. 
And so I'm really trying to figure out which game to put these in. And they, everything looks kind of so nice together. I don't want to split them across multiple games. <laughs> so anyway, go take a look at the Snowmire Games website and take a look at that. I think it's very reasonably priced actually. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is I've now acquired some Star Wars Imperial Assault miniatures that are painted. And these were actually donated to me as well. His name is Ben Waxman, and he took his copy and painted them all and sent them to me. And then when I got them, I sent uh, mine back to him. And he, I think he's going to paint those and maybe send those to somebody else even. So, Ben, I got to thank you again. I posted these on Twitter if you've seen these already. Uh, these look fantastic. I'll just kind of go through these. Here we got some of our heroes. These are a few of our heroes here. And, of course, there's a nice shot of our favorite Wookiee and our little wannabe Jedi to his right. I love these folks here. I love the expression on the guy's face on the right there. It looks fantastic. Now we got Vader and his little royal guard there. And then here we got father and son. I love the kind of weathered look of Luke there on the miniature. So I got to thank Ben again. Again, Ben, I thanked you already on the geek mail and stuff. But uh, I have to, you know, I'm just blown away. I have to share this with folks because I want people to know you know that the people are, are out there and they're doing good things for folks and i know this is directed at me i guess i don't know it's kind of a weird position to be in sometimes but i i don't you know i don't know i don't it's i do a thing and i get i enjoy it you know and yes there was a kickstarter and yes you know i got a free you know uh intro and these miniatures painted and yeah i don't know it's 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 tough and it's tough to talk about sometimes but um thanks that's all i can say so that's it all right so now we're getting to a blacklist of some games here <laughs> so i have five games to add to my blacklist and i apologize i know i talked a lot about my last sort of blacklist or year end end of the year kind of worst games and so i've kind of sort of acquaintances with a couple of the publishers with this one so i'm like well you know, I respect these people and, you know, I should probably just say it. And I know one of them is not going to take it wrong. The other one, he might. But, um, you know, so I feel like, oh, this is disrespectful if I don't explain why I don't like these games in some ways, too. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's just run down the list. I'm going to make it kind of brief. And the first one to add to the list is Epic Resort, which really disappoints me because I really like the first game from this publisher, which was Legacy Gears of Time. But and this one, like has some cool elements to it but the whole thing this one is sort of you build a resort and you sort of attract heroes and tourists and then you kind of flip cards out of a deck and that will be either more tourists showing up or it'll be monsters showing up and that deck is really random and frankly in a four-player game we kind of broke it where it was just like the last i don't know third of a game it just kind of like autopiloted and just it became really like the game just kind of like okay we know the game we've you know kind of clocked how the monsters have come out and counted them we know how it's going to end and it just kind of got, got on rails and it i played it three times that wasn't the only time i played with the four player I tried with two and so on and i don't know like it just there was just like i felt like it was just moving stuff around and not really doing anything and just oh randomly you got hammered by a monster and it's not not really the end of the world when you get hammered by the monster so it's not like you know it's too swingy and unfair but it just was something about the way that deck comes out and the monsters come out i, I can't even really explain it but it just wasn't fun at all and yeah so i think there's an issue i don't know if you would do like an abc deck you know or something like that now you have that with the monsters that come out so i should explain there's a deck where the tourists and the monsters and the monster will trigger this other monster deck so they do get harder but it's kind of strange like you have like a whole bunch in a row and it's like okay i'm just getting hammered 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 and so on but you have to play a few times you kind of realize which cards to hold back and you kind of protect yourself a little bit but it's just really kind of random i wish that would just be tweaked a little bit or something i don't know what to do but anyway so that was kind of one with some potential uh the next one was realm of wonder and i don't know if this has actually even come to the states but this is a game that i think had a lot of potential and probably something could be changed it's got some really cool things look at this board that like moves and rotates and so you're trying to basically get to the center of the board and the goals will change from scenario to scenario that you can do but it's really crazy because like you can go and like you know kill some monsters and do some other different goals and then like basically get some cards played on you that basically make you restart the game and nothing you can really do about it, it has some great amazing looking miniatures but 
yeah, I don't know. It, it's actually kind of fun to play. You know, I had a good time kind of playing it, but the whole take is like, okay, this happened one too many times. <laughs> I can't like this. I just don't want to play this anymore. So it looks gorgeous and it might be fun with smaller kids and stuff, I guess, but didn't really, you know, hit it out of the park at all for me at all. So I'm pretty disappointed in that. Uh, the next one is Crosshairs, and this is by 1A Games, and this is basically a roll move game. I don't know why I thought this was going to be somehow different or not, but the publisher actually sent this one to me. I don't know why he sent it to me, but I was like, oh, this actually looks pretty cool, because again, similar to Roman Wonder, which is kind of weird, the art and the production value looks sweet. It looks great. I'm like, this looks cool. This is a weird theme, but it just didn't work. This one's basically a roll of move game, so... I kind of dealt with that with the uh, with the Rattlebones. Rattlebones is better than this one, for sure. I mean, like, comparing it to I'm like, oh, Rattlebones is kind of an okay game <laughs> compared to this. And I didn't really like Rattlebones at all. This one, I don't even know how, what's going on. I mean, these guys actually published a war game and some other game, too. And I don't understand where this one comes from at all. So this one confuses me, and it's a roll and move game, and I don't know why a pump company that publishes a war game oh they published uh, tide of iron that's right sorry and that was a fancy flight game so uh, i don't know i don't understand why this game exists uh, uh what's this the fourth one is uh, is diner from dice hate me games and so i have here oh what i got a couple here well, i've got diner up here here's a couple i don't have at work uh these are these little rabbit games here and so far we've played Diner and uh, Isle Trains, which I did a review for, and the Brewcrafters card game. Excuse me. And um, liked Isle Trains quite a bit and also enjoy uh, Brewcrafters the card game quite a bit. I also have Brewcrafters the board game, which I haven't played yet, but I'm going to play this weekend. And like I said, like those two. And we played Diner. Now, Diner's kind of a real-time game where you have sort of these recipes and plates and stuff in this kitchen, sort of these cards and you're trying to grab the cards you get these cool things as like you get these little action tokens so it's not just all speed but you get an action token you pass it to your left and then you take the action like you take a, a plate or you know you try to reserve a table or something and then you can wait and sort of accrue those action tokens and then do a whole bunch of stuff at once but man when you do speed games and people are like trying to grab cards and things at the same time this is a recipe for disaster. Now, I got to say, we did laugh and have a good time the second time we played it. <laughs> and then the third time we played it, we were like, okay, this, this actually isn't any fun. <laughs> and the fourth time we played it, I tried to end the game as soon as I could. I would hoard the chips. Then I would like, you can kind of like destroy the discard piles, or the draw piles, excuse me. Um, so you might like this game. It has some speed stuff, but I'm like, oh, what? And this is the one that won the uh, the rabbit competition. So you had a competition of, of games. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun game. And like, I probably would play it if you asked me. But it's just, it's, I, there's like too many problems. It's kind of the same problems I have with lap dance, funnily enough. Uh, so anyway, that's Diner. And the last one is Redacted. Now, I, Redacted is a game uh, from Luda Creations, and they kickstarted last year. And so I don't own this game, but I actually played it. Uh, a friend of mine got it. And we kind of started liking it. And to be fair, I did do a play test session with it. And the game, I really, this is one, this is the one I really want to like. I want to like this game. But here's the problem. It's kind of like if you took Battlestar Galactica and you made it into a hero. So you have sort of hidden teams and you're trying to sort of sneak out with these plans and call down a helicopter and then your team gets away, but you don't know who's on your team. So you have these little interactions where you're kind of trading cards back and forth and you kind of have to move through rooms. You got a little sort of a, um, you kind of move until you have to stop, but some of the rooms will trigger like x-rays and things. So you have to do that. So you're doing the whole time you're changing cards, changing cards, but like after a while it gets super repetitive and like wrote so there's like this whole like i wish they would just kind of redo that whole card change thing because you like have to trade cards and then like depending on which sort of action happens you give them a different amount of cards and things and then you have these weapons which is kind of like a rock paper scissors thing and you're just like going through the motions after a while and then it just like the game lasts i don't usually like to say this but the game lasts probably a half hour longer than it should so it's longer than it needs to be for what it is, which is, I hate saying that for what it is. But yeah, so this is what I gotta add because it's one of those like, man, this could have been really cool. You could have had like, you know, they got multiple scenarios and things that you can do, 
but it just becomes so like methodical and boring and stuff after a while at the end of the game so anyway that's the last one for the blacklist so there's there you go there's games i don't like and don't ever play again <laughs> um but again i thought about it and i'm like you know what you know, I know kind of two of these design, uh, publishers, and one I respect quite a bit, and the other I also respect, but the other one I've become sort of friendly with, and I'm like, you know, I'm doing a disservice if I don't mention that I don't like it. it does, it's not like I'm trying to kill the game, because, you know, like I said, some of these games are close to being fun, or they're probably fun for other people, so that's fine. All right, so that's about it. So definitely go take a look at, you know, the websites I mentioned, uh, Game Shelf SE, the movie, all the other stuff. I'll put all these links up. I'll put a link to uh, Ben, uh, his username on Board Game Geek. So anyway, uh, everybody take care of yourselves and uh, go vote on the Twitch poll. Uh, vote for XCOM or Roll for the Galaxy or one of the others. Okay, thanks. Bye.